I, I would gather you probably don't think the so-called war on drugs has worked. Uh, that would be an absolute no, <laughs> right? And so I think anything America declares war on is not a good idea. Uh, but it's an illness, right? And so I see it as an illness. We have to treat it like an illness. And we have to, uh, you know, all this money we're spending on crime and prison, uh, if we switch some of that and put it back on treating folks uh, and providing the care that they need, I think we would be a lot more wiser and we would save money. And speaking of saving money, I mean, when it comes to the ripple effect through the, the social system, you know, just last week, someone that, that I know, she had a baby three weeks ago. She is an addict. She's already had her two young children taken from her and put into foster care. She had just gotten them back, had a newborn, and was given a script of opiates on her way home. And so now three weeks later, all three of the children have been removed again. And so that is, if in, in the meeting that I was at, the, the testimony hearing with Senator Claire McCaskill, one of the things that she asked is she said, is there, are, are we qualifying, are we talking to the patients before they leave? Do we know what their predisposition is? Do we know what their background is? And so, Anyone that would have known that she was an addict wouldn't have sent her home with another bottle of pills to relapse. And so these are the things that I think are very important. And the um, Hospital Association and the Medical Association of Missouri come out in December with some best practices guidelines to try to start addressing some of these things. But that's, if we can start having these conversations and having these reviews in the doctor's office. And one of the physicians on the um, panel said, you know, he said, well, we're with the pressure to only spend 15 minutes with a patient, you know, you don't have time to go through all of these important, important things and your physicians want to err on the side of, of caution by making sure they're taking care of pain. And as Americans, we don't deal with pain anymore. We think we shouldn't have any pain. And so all of this has led to an enormous epidemic that is very silent in nature because people who, who look like me have this in their homes and they don't want to talk about it because of the stigma. And until we talk about it and until we bring it out in the open and it starts getting treated as a disease that it is, then, then that's when we're going to start seeing these changes that we need. So